Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. Today I want to tell you what Germany is discussing about at the moment or our political establishment at least is discussing about these things. As you might know from my previous videos, on this Wednesday on the 18th of November our federal parliament was voting on a new law. A law that is meant to restrict civil liberties and our rights in case the parliament decides that we have a health crisis. The intention is of course to make these measures that the governors and the federal government are taking right now such as contact bans and mask wearing and social distancing and all that stuff to make this court proof. To make it absolutely clear that it is legal to impose these measures and that the fundamental rights that are granted in our constitution are overwritten or circumvented by this case of emergency, you might say. A lot of people demonstrated in Berlin against that and the faction of the AFD party clearly demonstrated their protest also in the Reichstagsbuilding, but something else happened that day. There were some guests in the Reichstagsbuilding at that time. Officially, they were guests of some members of parliament from the AFD faction. Some of them were activists or alternative journalists or YouTubers. And they were waiting for the members of parliament on the hallway and they were asking them questions. They wanted to know what their name is and how they would decide for or against this new law. And it is also documented on their own YouTube channels, on their videos, that in some cases they asked their questions in a very aggressive or confrontative manner and they were pretty rude in some cases. That was interpreted now as intimidating behavior or harassment of MPs in Parliament. That is of course not allowed. You must know that in the German Reichstag political demonstrations, showing of banners or the distribution of flyers and leaflets are not allowed. This is now of course taken as an opportunity by our mainstream media and the political elites to attack the AFD and to blow this out of proportion. Some of them have already called for the ban of the AFD party because this is some sort of political violence. In today's video I want to tell you first what the facts are, what happened really and then I want to give you my opinion about this issue. But before I start, as always, I want to thank my supporters and my subscribers. If you like these videos, like, share and subscribe. And if you want to support my work, you can do so via PayPal or via Patreon or Subscribestar. Links down below. Alright, so as I said in the introduction, on Wednesday a handful of AFD MPs have brought people into parliament with visitor passes. So they had these little temporary visitor passes and they could move freely more or less in the Reichstag's building. Not only where the tourists go, but they could move around as they were guests of these MPs. And the most notorious video that surfaced afterwards was from a certain Rebecca Sommer. I had not heard about that woman up until now. But let's just say that she presented herself not ideally in that video. The video is also linked down below. Now she's basically walking around in the hallways of the Reichstag's building and she asks random people whether or not they are MPs. And in case she gets a positive answer, she asks them right away how they will vote on the new law. Now she remains pretty calm if these MPs tell her that they are against it. But when they say that they are voting in favor of that new law, she verbally attacks them and in one case at least clearly insults them. When before she said, I'm a journalist, I'm a journalist, I'm allowed to ask these questions. Now the AFD came under heavy attack because of that. It is absolutely against the rules in the Reichstag. So Mr. Gauland apologized for this. He said that the MPs that brought these guests in are not really to blame. It wasn't their intention, but they should have taken more care about what these people are doing in the building. 
the legacy parties, of course, are saying now that they felt threatened and intimidated and they even had to lock themselves into their offices because they felt threatened, blah, blah, blah. That is, of course, absolutely ridiculous and over the top. I mean, this Miss Sommer, uh, she is an angry, frustrated old lady that yells at strangers. That is something that you see very often in Germany. It's not out of the ordinary. So maybe these parliamentarians are a little arrogant or one can say they lost touch. They are ivory tower elites that have lost contact to the normal average people in Germany. Because if they knew anything about the people in Germany, they would know that frustrated old aggressive ladies are very normal here. And that is something you need to deal with if you want to be in Germany. So trying to spin that or turn that into some kind of an attack on democracy and intimidating members of parliament and maybe that is a little bit over the top. I would agree that it was definitely rude and you might call it intimidation or harassment. I actually partially have to agree with that. And the worst thing is that it was in the Reichstag's building. If that had happened on the street somewhere, it would have been maybe okay, but not really actually. So while I completely agree with these activists, and they are activists, they are screeching activists, they're not journalists at that point anymore, I agree with them about this law. I don't want this law, I think it's a dangerous law, it's a very bad law, but at the same time they screwed up big time with that performance in the Reichstag. The most notorious scene was in fact when Mrs. Sommer was confronting Peter Altmaier, our minister for the economy. He had just entered the building and he was on the way to the elevator. And then Miss Sommer asked him if he intends to vote yes or no. She didn't even say hello, she didn't even introduce herself or asked if it's okay if she asks a quick question, just how are you gonna vote today? But nevertheless, Mr. Altmaier was answering in a very calm and composed manner that he is gonna vote in favor of the law. And then this lady completely lost it. She said, why are you doing this? You're taking away our liberty. Wah, 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 wah. And once again, of course, I agree with her technically on these points. But at that point, she stopped being a journalist and she became an activist. And this is exactly what we, for example, criticize a lot when it's about the mainstream journalists that are activist journalists. But she behaved in exactly the same way and she was not even sarcastic or witty or anything like that. She was just outright in his face, confrontative and nasty. And then it escalated even further. She said he doesn't have a conscience. And then when he was finally in the elevator and the elevator doors closed, she actually called him an a-hole and a little tiny wannabe king. So Mr. Altmaier might be a lot of things, maybe even a wannabe king, but he's not little, okay? This guy is not tiny. But anyway, so you really have to ask yourself, what are you actually trying to accomplish here? Do you want YouTube clicks? Do you want attention? Do you want to hurt the AFD because you have a grudge against them maybe? Or what is the purpose of this whole exercise? Because if it was really about red-pilling the normies or to convince fence-sitters or to expose these ivory tower elites as what they actually are, then you did a lousy job here. This woman apparently acted purely on emotion and she turned into a screeching radical. Mr. Altmaier was actually very calmly explaining his standpoint. He said that the voters in the district that he represents want this. I don't know if that is true, but that is at least what he said. And she completely lost it. So most people out there who see these scenes, they think there is a very polite, very calm, very composed politician who has to endure this screeching radical old hag. So they created a situation in which it becomes almost impossible for people that technically agree with them on this new law to defend them and their actions in the Reichstag. And then the normies, the people who watch a lot of TV, the fence sitters, the centrists, whatever you want to call them, they will be appalled by these optics, of course. Conservative, middle class people, they don't like this rude and emotional and aggressive behavior. 
you gave Mr. Altmaier and others a chance to present themselves as the sane, calm, logical Democrats that they want to be seen as. And you made it possible once more for the establishment to label the opposition as aggressive, having no manners, being absolutely over-the-top confrontative and insane, and just lacking any respect for our democracy. Now it goes without saying, of course, that left-winged activists have done the same in the Reichstags building in the past. And because I'm losing subscribers already, I might as well say it, yes, I really have to give my compliments to the public broadcasting here in Germany. They actually made a little list. I, I have to admit, I mean, this is actually what people want to see and want to know in this context. They made a little list here with all the um, activist action that took place in recent years in the Reichstags building. And one of them was, for example, environmentalists who were campaigning or arguing for ending coal power in Germany. And they actually waited for Angela Merkel somewhere in the hallway and they confronted her and they were uh, throwing around leaflets and uh, some other activists, they were laying down on the floor of the parliament and all these things and you know showing banners and all that stuff that is of course also not allowed that also falls under these rules i talked about earlier but of course when these things happened and it was like greenpeace and extinction rebellion and all these groups you know then the media was never making a big fuss about it and the authorities and the political parties they laughed about it and said ah these young people of course they want to do these things it's okay yeah it's not so serious and of course we know that when the afd or it wasn't the afd but people who are close to the afd when they do stuff like that it will not not be tolerated it will not be seen as something you can just laugh off and to be very clear about that i hate it when left-winged activists do these things and i also don't think and i also don't like it if other activists are engaging in these tactics civil disobedience and creative protest sure Self-defense, sure, but just harassing people when they're, you know, on the way to the elevator or when they're running late for a meeting, that is just stupid. So as my thumbnail says, this is the second time already now in this year that um, the establishment gets the chance to talk about the storming of the Reichstag, yeah, that right-wingers are trying to storm our parliament and to attack our sacred halls of democracy, desecrating them in the process. If you remember correctly, the first time was during demonstrations in August in Berlin when a group of, let's say, very esoteric people carrying all sorts of flags, but among them was also a certain historical German flag that um, in some places in Germany has been banned as a consequence now. Yeah, and they were going up the stairs of the Reichstags building. They didn't go inside, they just wanted to take a picture on those stairs. And that was enough for the German establishment to talk for weeks and weeks about democracy in danger and uh, dangerous right-wingers attacking democracy. And now this is the second time already. By now it should be very clear how these images are being used against the opposition, against the AFD, and uh, why give them more ammunition. I really don't get what the point of this exercise should be. And I also have to say that in both cases it was primarily unhinged middle-aged hysterical women that believe in crazy ideas that are somehow into occult topics. I don't know a lot about these things, but I wouldn't be surprised if they talk about vibrational levels and energies and quantum healing and all that stuff. Or maybe angels or aliens. And they believe in secret messages from the CIA and trust the plan. I think you know what I'm talking about. So I'm not saying that these things are done intentionally to create a certain perception in the wider public. But what I am saying is that these crazy women are not doing a great service to the opposition in Germany. In fact, I think they're doing a great disservice to the opposition. 
but I guess I'm just not really querfront material after all. Alright, so to sum up. On this Wednesday there were some guests in the Reichstag, they were guests of members of parliament of the AFD faction and they kind of lost control over them. They were YouTubers who recorded from the Reichstag's building, they were waiting for people on the hallway and they were trying to get statements and interviews from them about how they will vote on the new law and why that is and when they didn't like the answer that they got then they became a little bit confrontative and aggressive and in some cases outright insulting. That is of course terrible optics and it is being used right now in order to further isolate the AFD as if that was even possible and potentially maybe banning them outright in the future. Even though it is completely ridiculous, the establishment is treating that as if it was some form of political violence. When actual acts of violence are of course downplayed as always, like something you just come to expect when you live in a big city or oh come on it's the current year, we have to deal with these things and the real victims are the peaceful desert cultists. And while this is really a bad strategy and bad optics, it was very rude and unhinged and emotional and I don't like these things, in the end these were only words. And one has to say also that it is completely ridiculous how in public discourse it is completely 180 degrees switched. It almost feels like that the response to certain things that are happening are completely inverted. When there is actual physical violence against innocent civilians then they say this is not a big deal. And come on we have to live with that. Come on man. Dish the new normal man. But then when there is a confrontative, aggressive and emotional old hag, oh then, then it is actual violence. And our democracy is threatened by this now. And some leftists like Claudia Roth, of course they lied about it. They said that parliamentarians were attacked by her or they were threatened by her, which is not true. I mean, she was rude, yes, but she didn't threaten anybody. But how many people do you think are gonna watch the original video? And maybe I actually hope that they don't because if they watched the original video they would just think that this woman is crazy and Mr. Altmaier was actually staying very calm given the circumstances. So yeah, so this was a very bad week. First of all, we got this new law, which is horrible. I report about that. You can watch my older videos. And then, of course, it was an optics disaster. So these YouTubers, they should just decide whether or not they want to be activists or journalists. And if they want to go by journalists, well, then they shouldn't act like that when they get an answer in an interview that they don't agree with. Maybe they should try to ask loaded questions, rhetorical questions or lay rhetorical traps for the interviewee, something like that. They could even ask bad faith questions, whatever, just not outright yell at people and insult them. So one also has to say, and I want to add that, that our parliament is actually very transparent and very open to visitors compared to other countries. In the US and in France, for example, the security and the distance let's say between the parliament and the people is much larger. In Germany I have to say great care was taken to make this parliament relatively open and relatively transparent. However in recent years they actually talked about like building a ditch filled with water and a fence. I mean they really want to fortify this parliament building like a medieval castle or something like that. And after PR stunts such as this that I talked about today, this version of our Reichstag becomes more and more probable actually. Let me know what you think about these things down below and if there were similar things happening in your country for example during this year. I think many protests happened and was there maybe an incident or a time when there were protests near the parliament building or when members of parliament were let's say approached, intimidated or asked rude or confrontative questions. And how did the public and the media respond to that in your country? I would be really interested in that. So long. Servus, Kameraden.
Er hat absolut kein Gewissen, dieser Mann. Er redet von Gewissen, aber er hat kein Gewissen. Wie bitte Ihre Wähler möchten? Wissen Sie überhaupt, wie Ihre Wähler sind? Sie haben, Sie sind, Sie wissen überhaupt nicht, wen Sie vertreten. Sie sind völlig abgehoben. Sie sind völlig abgehoben. Sie haben überhaupt kein Gewissen. Deshalb haben Sie ein freies Gewissen. So ein Piep, aufgeblasener kleiner Wannabe-König.